Hi guys, a few days ago I was asked to do a video regarding the Sekonic light meter and the dynamic range of the Fujifilm GFX. I had a couple of questions actually, this is the main one. Uh, great video, can you make a video of how to use your handheld light meter in detail so I can learn how to use mine and also when you calibrated your camera with a light meter, what was the dynamic range of the GFX 50S for the highlights and shadows. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you are going to do this alongside with me, you're going to need a notepad. You're also going to need, I'm using the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. Sekonic do do their own version. I will be doing a video in the next week or so about full frame medium format. Is it worth staying? Is it worth ditching the full frame and going straight to medium format? Now it's getting quite accessible. So let's get started with that and I'll meet you outside. Okay, so I've just come outside, set up my colour checker passport on this little clip here. You've got to make sure that you don't get any sun coming in from this direction, so there's no casting, any, any casting shadows. So I'm just going to take an ambient meter reading here, and you've got to write down this number. So I've got f4.5 at 125th of a second. Then you switch over to spot meter and take a meter reading of the fourth one in, the fourth gray. That's coming out at 60th of a second, F4.0.6. So then you write down that number. So we go back up to our camera and we type in our settings that we got from the start. So I've got 125th of a second at F4. So 125 at F4, I take my first image Make sure it's in focus. You've got to make sure that the sun's not coming in and casting any shadows. Take another image. That's this three stops overexposed. Take another image and back up and then three stops underexposed. So 125, 250, 500, 1000. Take another image. Hey guys, so we've just come back in from outside and these three exposures here from the Sony that I did the other day. These three here I've just imported, these are GFX, which I've just done again. So what the uh, software likes is for it to be cropped. So you take your image, go into develop, and then I go to crop. I'm going to quickly breeze through this. It shouldn't take you that long. So you want to crop, that's why it's good to be on a tripod. Oh, let's try and straighten that out. Click that there, click done. So I click here, so I click these three. And then you go sync settings. It's already set to crop mine, so white balance is set, so it's going to change it for all three pictures. Click synchronize. I haven't exported them yet, so I go back in to grid view, click these. And then it's always good to export them as uh, as JPEGs. That's the only software. That's the all the software can read is a JPEG. So I just type in it's a Sony. So just type in GFX high res maybe. Uh, and put it into an export folder on the desktop. Sharpen for screen. Resize to fit, I'll turn that off. I want it a high quality JPEG. So you want to add all metadata so the metadata gets attached from the raw files embedded into the JPEGs. That's really important, otherwise, the software won't recognize the EXIF data. So it's always important to click this option here. Click export. So I'm back on a desktop. I've now just attached my light meter. By the USB, press the on button, the little USB logo will flash. You then come down to your data transfer, your DTS software transfer. It knows something's been connected. Or you come down to new, create a new profile, up to quick mode, and we're using the x right color checker target. But obviously, you can use these other ones here. Click next. So this is where you import your settings from that you wrote down outside. So your 125th per second f4 5 tenths. And for the spot meter, we had 60 
sixteenth of a second, f4, six tenths. ISO 100, come down to next. And it's then looking for them. So, desktop, GFX. Two, three, click next. And these little crosshairs pop up, so you just put them on the white next to the white crosshairs. That's why it's good to shoot on a tripod because it keeps everything steady, and then you just click one, two, three, and it finds the uh, reference points on all the images. If you're trying to do that handheld, it'd be a nightmare to try and line up. Then you click next, this is the good part. So here is what the GFX currently can see, but this is like a very, very safe limit. So I normally click save, give it a name, so just call it GFX um, 100 ISO, ISO, click save, that's okay. And then you click on him again, and you go into edit profile. We want to change the exposure range. It's quite a conservative list, really. If they do play it quite safe. I mean, look, you can see there's like another one and a half stops, maybe one stop that side. So I normally go upwards of four. Let's just try and play around so this does. And that's pretty pushing it a bit too much. I'll probably pull him back to about there. So now we've done that, we've messed around with this, we now go into back. I mean, I might come back into this later on and actually play around with this, but we just go we go into back for now. Do you want to save and overwrite this to the, yes, the default option, we want to overwrite. So we then click on the GFX 100 ISO, we press this arrow, we want to put it in slot 1. We push that over and then you come down to the bottom left and it says transfer to light meter. Overwrite profile data in light meter, yes. That's now been sent to the light meter, we click OK. Hi guys, so we've now come outside with the light meter. This is a fairly straightforward scene, as you can see it's just a simple tree composition. It's quite a high contrast scene, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so the sun's still pretty high. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, I mean you could, you could shoot this image, there's a woodpecker. There's another one. Wow, two woodpeckers. Hmm. So turn on your light meter. Get the um, lumosphere, the dome out. I'm going to take an ambient meter reading. So I want to shoot at, I've got my lens at f11, so I'll type in f11. So I've just taken an ambient meter reading, I'm getting a shutter speed of 15. So I type 15 into my camera, the camera's gone to sleep. So I type 15 in, and that's saying that's exposed. So you're on the back of the, com on the, back of the camera now, Remember, this is based on a, J, on a JPEG. That's blinking at me. That's going, my camera's going crazy right now. So that's the thing. My camera is struggling with this scene. So if I, if I take an image there, let's take an image with 15 shutter speed and review that image. Yeah, my blinkies are on. My blinkies, remember this? image on the back of your, cam your camera is, is a JPEG, as I said before in previous video. Uh, i got 15 for a second, I type that in into memory, I press the memory button on the side, and I type mid-tone. Then I turn to the spot meter, which is the little dial on the right, take the cap off, and uh, I look at the scene, and okay, what's the brightest thing? It's going to be the clouds. So the sun does keep dipping in and out behind the clouds as it always does. Let's take a reading off the white cloud in the distance. I get one twenty-fifth of a second. So let me type that into memory. What's the darkest thing in the distance? It's probably going to be that cluster, small cluster, woodland cluster in the distance. So I then look back through my meter. What's that coming out at? It's eight, fifteen, eight. One eighth of a second. Okay, so let me put that into memory as well. So just from that, it's taken. I've only been here a couple of minutes. My my sensor can easily capture that in one shot. I haven't got to take 15 to 20 shots to get the right exposure. I've protected the 
highlights, I've protected the shadows. You turn up, you compose your scene, you look at the, the highlights, you look at the shadows, you sort out your mid, you type that into your light meter, you put that in your camera, it's one shot. So do, do you need a light meter? If you're gonna print, this year I'm looking to print quite a lot, so I need to protect my highlights and protect my shadows and create the, the um, best digital negative I can. I mean, you could do a lot of this in post. You could put, you could put a grad on the sky if you're just posting to Instagram or Facebook, it's tiny, like inch by inch, tiny little image. It's fine. You can't, but when you print big, you can you can really see you can really see the difference. So I'm not using leaf fillers here today. It's just a quick quick demo, really, to to test out the. Um, now we've calibrated the sensor in this meter. I just wanted to quickly come out and show you guys what the deal is. It doesn't look when you when you do when you do the grads in post. They don't they don't look as natural. I like to try and get all of the settings right in camera, one shot, by using filters. So I don't want to be spending my nights and evenings editing at a computer in post. I want to be out shooting every day or every week as much as I can. So the, the, more, the more I can get it right in camera in one shot, that's, that's perfect for me. My camera would flip out normally at this. It is flipping out at this. It can't work out because it's always trying to make that 18% grey, the middle grey. So it doesn't know what's important to me. I'm, I, I need to tell it what's important. That's what the light meter enables me to do. It, you need to start trusting this little device rather than the camera's meter every single time because the camera has no idea what's important. It's just like, yeah, let's just make everything 18%. That's it. I've been blown away this week by the amount of subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really do appreciate uh, your support. It really does spur me on to keep coming out and make videos. It's only been a week, about a week and a half I've been doing it for on YouTube. So I've been blown away by the response and all the love and all the messages. It's just been, it's just been overwhelming actually. So if you liked today's video guys, click the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate support. And let's look forward to the weekend when we're at the TPS show in Birmingham.